everything you need to know about cotton. Centuries ago, the Inca made gullible suits of armor that had the ability to stretch with blows of sharp spears and sticks. This suit was used to protect the warriors from dangerous attacks during the war. You might be thinking that this suit would have been made from iron, but you would be flabbergasted to hear that it was made from cotton. The cotton plant is widely used in textiles. Welcome back to Fashiony Magazine. In this video, I am going to talk about everything about cotton, like how we produce it, how people use it for fashion, what is the best cotton quality, how you can recognize the quality of cotton, the downsides of the production, and how you can buy it. Let's dive straight into it. What is cotton? Cotton is the world's most popular cultivated non-food plant. People have been growing this plant for a long time, and the major reason for its popularity is that it has been used to make cottonseed oil and animal feed, and is the chief material of the fashion industry. Basically, cotton is a soft, fleecy staple fiber. There is evidence that says that cotton has been used in textile in India since 5000 BC. The cotton plant actually needs a lot of sunlight, a lengthy period of frost, and plenty of rain. Cotton grows in about all tropical and subtropical regions of the world, and the most popular countries producing these plants are the US, Uzbekistan, China, and Pakistan. How to produce it? Farmers mostly grow cotton seeds in the spring season, and the major reason is that the growth of this plant requires a lot of water. After planting the trees, the plant grows into the green with a height of around three meters. When the plants get to such a height, farmers spray them so that the leaves die and the plant remains with bare sticks. It takes around five months during this process. The bowls open up to disclose the fluff and the cotton waits for the farmer to pick. In some countries like Australia, farmers use heavy machinery like harvesters to pick the cotton and then gather them into round modules and move them to the cotton gin for further processing. So in the next processing, or you may call it ginning processing, the lint gets isolated from the seed and then transformed into the rectangular bale. Then this is sent to the textile mill to be transformed into thread and woven into fabric. What is the best quality of cotton? Supima is very rare and the best quality cotton. According to a report, about 25 million tons of cotton is produced in the world, and Supima is just 1% of it, which makes it so unique. Supima is mostly grown in the US, especially in California and Arizona. As per the statements of some experts, you could find the best quality of Supima only in California, and the reason is the stable climatic condition and fertility of the soil. The extra long staple fiber gives it premium characteristics like strength, smoothness, and color holding. It is mostly grown on the 500 farms, and the majority of them are run by the second or maybe third generations. The farmers of Supima are proud of their quality cotton and long legacy, and that is true, as they have invested years and years in it. They ensure the health of the seed, the fertility of the land, and the clean water used for a plant. Many people believe that it is a kind of cotton plant, but actually that is not the case. It is basically a brand known as ASA. Another interesting thing about ASA is its guidelines that prevent the growers from using any kind of toxic or dangerous thing in the production or manufacturing process. This makes the Supima environmentally friendly. Moreover, the Supima organization checks each and every step from fiber to the final product in order to maintain quality. One thing you should know about cotton is that its size does not matter at all. What really matters is its longer fiber. The great thing about Supima is that it has long fibers that give it an edge over another cotton. The normal length of normal cotton is usually about one inch, but if it is Supima, then it goes up to one and a half inches. The length makes a difference here because if the cotton has shorter fibers, like in all normal cotton, they have weaker tails so they can break or tear easily. Supima was actually introduced for the first time back in 1911, when one of the farms discovered a cotton plant with extra long staple fiber that was strong and smooth, and this plant became popular as Pima. Back in 1954, the organization of Supima came into existence by a group of US farmers because the demand for this quality of cotton increased greatly. 
After a few years, in 1988, this cotton earned its repute that it is the best quality of cotton and also became the number one pick of Swiss and Italian high-end spinners. Now its farmers are using some of the most advanced technology, GPS navigation, and soil monitors. All these steps contribute greatly to the highest quality of the cotton, and it also does not majorly affect the soil. Also, it has zero waste because almost 35% of the Supima cotton is made up of fibers, other parts are also consumed too. Farmers use this seed in the preparation of cottonseed oil. When the seed is excluded, it can be used as food for livestock. When the Supima is harvested, the farmers clear the field and do not leave anything. So this helps to avoid pests. If we talk about recent times, it is exported to all over the world and supplied to the leading companies, brands, and fashion houses. Now you might have a question in mind that there would be a different way of washing the Supima from normal cotton, but actually it's not. The great thing about Supima is that it becomes softer and smoother after every wash. If we compare the Supima with other cotton like Egyptian cotton, Egyptian cotton actually represents the country of origin and a very small percent of the cotton that has a long staple quality comes from Egypt. About 10% of the cotton comes from Egypt and 90% of this cotton comes from India and China. The downsides of production. The major downsides of cotton production are that many farmers use pesticides, which are harmful to the soil. Also, this plant consumes a lot of water. Imagine if the country produces a majority of the cotton and exports it all over the world. How much water would it consume? You would be shocked to hear that it takes about 2,720 liters of water to make one t-shirt. And imagine if you have to make a pair of jeans, it would probably need more than 10,000 liters of water. The diversion of water and its pollution due to the growth of cotton has some adverse effects on our ecology, like the Aral Ocean, the Indus Delta, and the Murray-Darling River. Moreover, cotton cultivation also results in the degradation of the soil, which is also a major issue. According to a report, some experts say that if soil degradation continues to happen, we will only be able to grow food for just the next 60 years. Imagine what would happen next. There would be a scarcity of food due to the soil. We hope for the best, but this is a major issue. A majority of the cotton is produced in the well-established ground, but the collapse leads to enlargement into new zones and the associated obliteration of habitat. Did you know that pests affect about 15% of the world's population, and this might be the number one crop that is affected by a pest? During the growth process of cotton, farmers use pesticides. Actually, there are several hundreds of insects that try to attack the cotton crop. Farmers mostly have to rely on the sprays to kill the insects, but these sprays of medicine are very harmful, and that is the reason that they are completely banned in Western countries. But unfortunately, they are still being used in countries like India and Pakistan. The quality of the soil gets low. Not just it, but toxic medicines and pesticides also affect the health of many farmers, despite using precautions. Fair trade works with farmers to avoid the usage of pesticides and supports them in adopting harmless methods like changing climate patterns. Fair trade also banned the hereditarily adapted cotton seed. Where to buy? The producers of cotton mostly sell them to local buyers or merchants. The local merchants buy at a lower cost from farmers and then again sell them to the textile mills in the US or other countries. In the southern region of the US, you can buy them from the states of Alabama, Florida, North Carolina, and Virginia. And the normal session of harvest is between September to December. You can also buy them from the Mid-South region, like in the state of Louisiana and Mississippi. If you want to buy them from the West region, you can go to Arizona, New Mexico, and California. That's all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you will be notified of each update. I will catch you in the next video.